Well, last week, uh, I was telling people at the beginning of the Mass about uh, the gospel that we hear last week that was about the blind man. And I was telling people that the blind man represents all of us, all of us, we have been born blind. And that means that we don't discover God right away, but at some point in our lives, we had to be enlightened and we had to discover God. And I was giving the example of um, a mother. She sees uh, her son coming back from a party on Saturday. And then the following day, she's uh, pondering, she's going to Mass, and she's pondering, and she said, well, I'm sure my son enjoyed the party last night. No, but I don't know why he doesn't wake up to come to Mass with me. I don't know why he doesn't go to church. And she's pondering these things. And then um, the woman is kind of saddened because the son is not going. Well, that is because her son, her eyes have not been opened yet. And that's why she, he doesn't see what is important. So he has to have some awakening some, at some point in his life and to be able to discover God. And to discover God is to be enlightened, to be able to see family in a different way, God in a different way, money in a different way, and then work and everything that you do, you see it in a different way because you have been enlightened and you have discovered God. That's what is the difference. There is some, there is some enlightenment. So we have been enlightened by God. We believe in God. And that's why we are here. But we have been enlightened, but now we need some direction. And that's what we hear in the gospel today. That's when we raise the questions, what is my final destiny? What is my final destiny? What, what is it I was created for? What I am doing in this life? And then the greatest of the questions, how, what is going to happen at the end of my life? And we don't like to think about that because uh, we don't want to die. We were created for life. So when we think about that, that is scares us sometimes. And we ponder, you know, what happens right after that? Is the, the, the soul going to go down to the Sheol, the place of the dead? Or I'm going to return to nothingness? And the society, the media out there, do not like us to think about that. And sometimes we are Christians, uh, we don't think that much about it. And sometimes we pray to God, we have our prayers, I said the prayers, hoping that God one day will have pity on us and will give us the life that he has promised. And we do these prayers. It's like telling God, okay, I'm doing these prayers, so you have to do this for me. You have to give me life. Or sometimes we pray for someone to be healed, for someone not to die, and then that happens. And we ponder, you know, what is a religion for? Why do we have to believe in God if He doesn't give us what we want? But sometimes we can contemplate God um, seeing us. If there is a God, you know, especially the society out there, if there is a God, and then He's seeing us walking to death, and He doesn't do anything about it. And that the image of a cruel God. And then we ponder what is next. But the answer we find it in the gospel today. Uh, this beautiful story that we hear about the resurrection of Lazarus. There is a lot of theological meaning in this reflection. Jesus, he was good friend with Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. They were from Bethany, 
And Jesus used to go and visit them often. He was spending time with them. And then Martha and Mary, when Lazarus gets sick, they send a word to Jesus telling him, well, the one that you love, your, your friend, Lazarus, is ill. Please come and see him. Well, Jesus is there with, uh, where he was baptized by the Jordan. That's where he is with his disciples. And he doesn't go. We hear in the gospel today that he tells his disciples uh, he waited two more days. And then he tells his disciples, this uh, Lazarus is asleep. And they say, well, if he's asleep, he will get well. And then Jesus says openly, Lazarus has died. And then um, after that, he says to his disciples, it has happened so you may see the glory of God. And then they go on their way. They go to Judea, um, where Bethany is. Jesus doesn't, doesn't enter um, the house. He stays outside the town. And this, this resurrection of Lazarus, uh, it shouldn't be called resurrection. It should be called reanimation, because Lazarus was res- risen to this life, not to the world of God. So resurrection is to be raised to the world of God. So, but the Jesus is there, I and mean, when he is uh, there, Martha comes to meet him outside the village. And we see that Mary is, uh, Martha is angry with Jesus because they sent a word to Jesus to come and he Lazarus and he, he didn't show up. And she's telling him, Lord, if you will have me here, my brother will have no died. In other words, why you were not here? You know, we asked you to come, and you didn't come. And then we see the response of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. And those who have died, if they believe, they will rise. And just by telling Martha that, she places her faith in Jesus. So there, there is a, something very different when we think that everything is going to be ending in death. There is no meaning. And there is no reason, you know, just to keep the life because we have to keep it. If at some point we're going to die and everything is going to be there, ending there, so at some point we might have to die. But Jesus is still on Martha. I am the resurrection and the life, you know. And even uh, those who believe in me, even if they have died, they will rise. And Martha believes in the words of Jesus. At the beginning, Martha was thinking that the resurrection was to, to this life, like the Jews believe. But Jesus is telling her that they will rise, they will be alive. And then she placed her faith in Jesus, and she believes. So then uh, Mary comes. The Jews are following with Mary, thinking that she's going to weep at the tomb. And Mary is also complaining to Jesus. She doesn't know yet. And she's, Lord, if, my, if you will have been here, my brother will have not died. She's angry also at Jesus. And Jesus is doing his work there. He's working faith in them. Hey, they're having a hard time. But we see, one of the things that we see here is that Jesus, we see his humanity. He's very human. He's uh, weeping with his family. He's weeping at the death of Lazarus. And the translation says, weeping without ceasing. So he was deeply troubled by that. So he's suffering with his family. He's grieving as well. But there is a difference because Jesus is a human being, but he's God as well. He has the power to give life. That's why he raised the questions, where have you laid him? And then they take, take Jesus to the tomb. Martha, the one who believed and placed the faith in Jesus, is doubting again. Because uh, when Jesus says, remove the stone, she says, well, there is a stench already. Lazarus had been dead for four days already. The Jews believed that there was no way someone can be brought to life after the fourth day. And then we see the voice of Jesus calling out Lazarus. Uh, 
but that he's correcting Martha. Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And then she places completely her faith in Jesus. I know, Lord, that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world. And then we see the resurrection happening after Martha and Mary had placed that faith in Jesus. And then Jesus calls out Lazarus. Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus, come back to life. I was trying to think of uh, uh, something to explain um, what Jesus is telling us in the gospel. I think that it came with this image. When a woman is pregnant, and uh, she's pregnant with twins, so the babies are in the womb, and they're, they're just um, in the womb. Um, they, they know the, that there is another one, another being. They feel that familiarity. But then one of them is born. And the other one might feel like, well, what happened? You know, I used to have my brother here. You know, but he's not here anymore. Did he die? But the brother didn't die. He was born. And when he was born, he just came to another life, to another world. It was painful, his birth, as it's painful as we go through life. But once he is born, he's able to contemplate his mother's face. And he's able to contemplate his father's face. So he, he was just born to another life. And that's what Jesus is telling us in the gospel today. That's what happens when we die. We are born to another life. It's a beautiful image that we see here. Jesus, uh, um, when, when we read the, the gospel, he gets uh, perturbed, he gets angry um, at, the, that, at the death of Lazarus. Because that's not, that's, that's not what is in the heart of God. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want us to die. That's not in the heart of God. He doesn't want the human being to die. And that's why another translation is he gets angry at the death of Lazarus. And he gets angry because the sin of our first fathers. If our first father would have no sin, the human being wouldn't die. So well, it's not God who wants us to die, but it's the sin of the human being, the sin of the first fathers. And therefore we are destined to, lie, to die. But that's, that's why Jesus gets perturbed, because he's grieving the death of Lazarus. He didn't want his friend to die. But then we see that he has the power to bring him, bring him back to life. And Lazarus, he was uh, risen to this life. But the, premise, the, the promise of Jesus is that we can be risen to a greater life. I am born inspired. She talks about uh, that, that there is a darkness in God. Um, for example, when a child dies, we want to know why. And we then demand to know why, and we say we, have, we want to have an answer. And sometimes we can find an answer. And then we say, God, you know, why do you allow this to happen? That's the darkness of God. And that, Diane Bonespire, she says that that darkness is what tells us that we're human beings. We cannot understand at all. Now, there are things that we cannot understand in God because we are limited. And then she talks about the angels, that there are some things that they do not understand of God. That's what tells them that they're creatures. But the way that we'll be able to see everything clearly is when, when we go before the Father, when we contemplate His face, because that's what heaven is about. Just to be with God. And when, when you die and you contemplate the Lord as He is, there is no need to ask questions because you will understand everything in God. And there is no need for anything else because you will find everything in God. And that's the life that we should be longing for. 
a life that has been promised to us, a life that never ends, to enter into the world of God and to see God as He is and then to see our beloved ones who have died. But that's our hope that one day that's going to happen. There is in the Vatican Museum, and there is a, a small crypt, and that's uh, of uh, someone who died. Um, he has on, on, on the marble, there is a, a mark that says, that says, at this place rests city, who was three months and 24 days. <clears throat> and then he has a, 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 a laurel crown, that is the sign of victory. And then on the, the middle of the crown, he has a cross, who is Christ, the victor of death. And then he has two, two doves with uh, olive uh, leaves. And the doves represent the peace, the eternal peace. And then he has a, an alpha and omega, beginning and end. Well, the, the omega is first. The end is first. And then the Alpha is next. After death, there is an eternal life. The end, but then there is eternal life. That's the way that they were seeing, that she was already with God, to be with God forever. A beautiful image. And that's what is awaiting for us. That's what God has promised. And that's the life that we are looking for. And we are to do everything in this life to work for that life that God wants to give us because He loves us deeply. Amen.